Hello everyone, Kevin Chamberlain here. Last time I talked about why Tolkien is one of my biggest literary influences. But as I said before, he influenced many a best-selling author, from Tad Williams to George R. R. Martin to Christopher Paolini. Today I want to talk about Christopher Paolini and why he's one of my influences on my sci-fi series. So let's begin. For those of you who don't know, Christopher Paolini is the best-selling author of The Inheritance Cycle, which comprises of Aragon, Eldest, Bersinger, and Inheritance. He's also the author of the recent sci-fi book To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Having been homeschooled without conventional summer vacations, he was able to graduate high school at the age of 15. Having read lots of fantasy and science fiction growing up, Paolini wanted to put his own mark on the fantasy genre, and in 2002, he wrote Aragon and self-published it under his parents' self-publishing company. Together with his family, they traveled throughout the Northwest promoting the book. Carl Hyacinth, the author of Hoot, happened upon a copy of the self-published edition of Aragon and bought it for his then 12-year-old stepson Ryan, who really liked the book. Hyacinth then brought it to the attention of his editor at Knopf in 2003. Knopf then approached Paolini to publish it, and the rest is history. Now, I met my best friend Justin in the latter half of my freshman year of high school when he was a senior, months away from graduation, and I couldn't help but notice that he had a paperback copy of Aragon, the kind with Sephira painted by artist John Jude Palancar. It stayed in the back of my mind, and it was definitely one of Justin's favorite books, and he was the first to highly recommend it to me, especially after he graduated. I don't really know why I was so iffy about it at the time. My best guess was that in 2005, I was already caught up in working on my sci-fi series, which actually all began in my high school library just a month before my 16th birthday. And then in my junior year, I was more occupied with my creative writing class. More on that story in another video. But what finally got me to read Aragon, believe it or not, was actually the movie made back in 2006. Oh boy, this is not going to be the best part, but let me explain. Unlike the Lord of the Rings movies that got me to read the book and appreciate both the book and the movies, the Aragon movie did not have the same effect. It got me to read the book and appreciate it, yes, but it did not get me to appreciate the movie that ironically got the ball rolling. Here's how it happened. I saw the movie, I liked it at first, and I was finally convinced to read the book by Paolini himself. However, I had to start out small by checking it out from my high school's library before buying it at Borders. But all the copies of Aragon had been checked out, so I decided to cheat a little by reading the first three chapters of Eldest. Thankfully, there was a complete synopsis of Aragon summarizing the previous book. In reading said synopsis, that was when I began to see the holes in the Aragon movie, and that was when I began to despise the movie, and it went full circle after I finally read the book Aragon itself. It goes without saying that the book deserved much better treatment. For years, I've been toying with the idea of doing a video essay talking about the 11 missteps that went into the Aragon movie. And I might still do that at some point, although bear in mind it will not be a top 11 list because there's no particular order into what went wrong, and I won't get into it here. And in case you were wondering, yes, Justin hated it too, and he read the book before it was even made into a movie, so I felt for him. But the silver lining was that I read Aragon and Eldest, and I became a fan of the series. Prior to 2008, the Inheritance series was originally planned as a trilogy, so when Brissinger came out, I was admittedly disappointed that this was not the conclusion of the series. I started reading it, but I stopped around the 200 page mark because it felt like it lagged. It would take me another two years to try again and read it in its entirety and change my opinion on it. Thankfully, my opinions on it have changed for the better, especially after I finally read Inheritance in 2011. Now I reread this series once a year every year like I do with Lord of the Rings. When I first worked on my book series, I originally tried to do it in a graphic novel format with myself doing the story and art like Brian Lee O'Malley, but the more I tried, the more I realized that long-form comicking, or long-form drawing, was not something I had the time, space, or patience to do at the time. But the reason why I tried it that way was because I had doubts if I could tell the story well with words in a novel format. What got me to change my mind was when I reread The Inheritance Cycle in 2012. It was also that same year I saw this little video where he gave his advice on how to be a good writer, and part of that was read. Good writers are good readers. So after rereading Paolini's series, I then decided to try full-on novel, and thankfully I became more confident in my own writing. This was also made better by the fact that I'm a fast typist, so if I decided to change something about a character or what have you, I could do that with ease. 
While Tolkien made me realize that I wanted to be a creative writer, it was Paolini who made me realize that I could be a creative writer from a novel standpoint. At first glance, Aragon seems like a Star Wars clone, but to Paolini's credit, he made it more than just a love letter to Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. And the way he writes about Alagazia is so richly detailed that at times he seems more like a nature writer than a fantasy writer. Paolini becoming a best-selling author before the age of 21 really resonates well with people, especially me when I was in high school hard at work on a book series that ultimately took up half my life. In 2020, I then read Paolini's debut sci-fi novel, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, and I enjoyed it, especially the audiobook read by actress Jennifer Hale. Side note, I actually met Jennifer Hale in person the year before at a convention, and I told her that my introduction to her was when she voiced Mallory from Mighty Ducks. Oh, no, 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 no. I'd rather eat a bowl of worms. Oh, he obviously has a crush on you, sweetheart. Just try to, you know, draw him out. I had no idea that her first audiobook gig was going to be for one of my favorite authors. Anyway, to my relief, my sci-fi book series is a lot different from his, although I did take inspiration from one concept that is not uncommon in sci-fi. More on that in a later video. At any rate, I was initially worried that his was going to feel too much like what I was hard at work on, to the point where I'd feel compelled to scrap it. Ray Harryhausen was once hard at work on a film about dinosaurs and the origin of Earth, but when he saw Fantasia in 1940, he ultimately scrapped that idea for that very same reason. Thankfully, that didn't happen in the slightest in my case, so, phew. Another reason why Paolini is one of my literary influences is because he opened the door to my other literary influences like Tad Williams and Brian Jakes. I will talk more about Tad Williams and Brian Jakes in later videos, but for now, I realized that it was good to look into those who've influenced your influences, which in turn helped me with my writing. Furthermore, Paolini is really good to his fans. Just watch him at a book signing or a panel. He actually liked a couple of my tweets and replied to some as well. I know, that doesn't seem like much, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Paolini's also not a bad artist and many of his artwork can be found online. He even contributed at least an illustration to the illustrated edition of Aragon alongside artists like John Jude Palancar, who did the cover artwork for all four books published through Random House. Speaking of cover artwork, Paolini drew the dragon eye that was originally on the cover of the self-published editions of Aragon. Many of his artwork could really help guide a good production team to adapting a faithful adaptation of the series. He'd make a great conceptual artist in the same way Alan Lee and John Howe contributed to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies. Too bad the movie really disregarded Paolini's artwork, although to be fair, many of these drawings, like the one he did of Galvatorix, didn't come around until after 2006, but that still doesn't excuse the movie for jumping the gun. At any rate, Christopher Paolini's books are well worth the reading, especially if you love fantasy and science fiction as much as I do. I don't know a lot of authors who've cited Paolini as one of their influences, but once published, I'll be one of them. This is Kevin Chamberlain. Thank you for watching.